What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, uh, welcome to you as well. Today we're going to start a new series called, But If You Had to Choose, Which Would You Choose? And what we're going to do in this series is we're going to compare and contrast uh, two similar items and, uh, you know, see which one's better. If you had to choose, which way would you go? We're going to start the series off with my Ar Ibanez RGs, of which I have two. They were both manufactured in Indonesia, uh, approximately seven years apart, according to the serial numbers. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's delve a little more deeply into these and see what uh, sets them apart. This one is older. This is a 2011 uh, RG 920 QMZ. Basically, the QM stands for uh, quilt maple. It's got a quilt maple veneer top. And the Z actually, I believe, stands for the uh, Edge Tremolo 2 Zero Point Trem which system, which is on the back. It's a little different from your typical uh, tremolo system in that there's springs in both directions. Essentially, that keeps the bridge pretty much in a locked position, except when you use kind of excessive force uh, to maneuver the whammy bar. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of the best of both worlds, that trim system. I kind of, it's a love-hate relationship, you know. Um, it makes it much harder. You can't flutter at all, and it's, it takes a lot more force to actually work the tremolo, but when you're not using it, uh, tuning is pretty stable. So that's pretty cool. Uh, basswood body. Two humbuckers, obviously. Um, tone, volume, five-way selector switch. And this one has a five-piece neck. You can see better there. Consisting of maple and walnut. And uh, both of these RGs have a volute, which is that little... This one has your standard um, Ibanez branded tuners. Locking in the front. And uh, yeah, so the only modification I've made to this is obviously the pickups, which I mentioned in a previous post. Uh, these are bare knuckle silos because the ones that came with this guitar originally, they were, um, they just lack something. I don't know. Tonally, they weren't that high output. They didn't sound great. So I kind of had to take them out and go with the silos. Rubia, these things are awesome. Love these pickups, man. These are like my new favorites. I want to try some other ones, but these things are sick. So happy with that. Uh, yeah, what more can I say? Offset abalone, abalone, however you say it, um, dots. This does not have... No, I don't believe this has the Lumen Lay side dots. They're just standard black dots. But yeah, so quilt maple top. There you go. This thing is sick. I love this guitar, man. It plays well. And I weighed both these guitars. They literally weigh like a tenth of an ounce different, so they're virtually the same. Somewhere around eight to eight and a half pounds. I don't remember now at this point. But yeah, there's that one. Okay, now for the uh, other one. The, this is an RG 1070 PBZ. Uh, the PB stands for Poplar Burl because it has a Poplar Burl top. And again, the Z uh, denotes the zero-point tram system. Uh, this one was also manufactured in Indonesia. I can only assume the same factory. Uh, I really don't know for sure. There were some upgrades on this one. So it's a little bit newer. This is a 
2017, so they're actually six years apart. I said seven years apart earlier. My bad. Um, yeah, upgrades. Yeah, so the pickups in this one were upgraded to the Tone Zone, True Velvet, and the Air Norton, which is seems to be a, a common setup in a lot of uh, Ibanez guitars. I know that um, Paul Gilbert used them for a long time, and I believe Angel Vivaldi uses them in his uh, signature Charvel model as well. They sound decent. Um, they actually, I was surprised that the Tone Zone actually has a higher output than I thought it did because at first it didn't sound very loud uh, to me, but then I compared it to some others in my uh, DAW and I realized that it was ki kicking up uh, higher input. So that was kind of interesting to see. Also upgraded were the uh, Lumen Lay side dots, which maybe you can't see, but you know what they are. They glow in the dark after you kind of hit them with some, some light. Also, this one has the uh, Goto locking tuners. I love those. I actually installed those on a couple other guitars because they, they work great. No complaints there. And what else do we have? Oh, this one has an 11 piece neck and this thing is gorgeous. I love this neck. I love the look of this neck and it's dry. There's no finish on it. There's no kind of satin or anything. It's very smooth. Uh, it's comprised of, hope I get this right, Wenge, Babinga, Maple, and Purple Heart. So, yeah, 11 piece neck. That was for 2011. Uh, 2012 and beyond, they actually swapped out the Wenge for, uh, I don't know how you say it, Panga Panga or Penga Penga, whatever that wood is. I don't know the difference, but it feels great. They're both wizard necks, they both have the same profile. Uh, 25 and a half inch scale length. 400 millimeter uh, radius, which equates to about, I think, 15 and three quarter inch uh, radius across the board, which is nice for me because it's not too curved and it's not too flat. I certainly would not want to play something like a 20 inch radius. That's not for me. And then if you take a look at the, uh, my Fender Strat or, you know, any Fender, they're typically around nine and a half inch radius to maybe 12 inch, depending on the year and the model much more curved, but this is right in the middle, kind of that Goldilocks setting. And I, I just love it. So basically 15 and three quarter inch uh, radius. Uh, yeah, I, I purchased both of these on Reverb at different times. And this one came with a lot of issues. When I first received it, it had a really thick gauge of string on it. Uh, it needed to be set up. And actually I had to have some fret work done and I had to have the truss rod adjusted. I couldn't budge it. That truss rod was just cranked into place and I didn't know which direction it was cranked. Um, they both have the dual action truss rod which allows you to put a curvature in either direction of the neck, which is pretty useful uh, if you get a funky, you know, warped uh, neck and you want to straighten it up. But considering that this is 11 pieces, you know, glued together, that's supposed to be like super strong, apparently. That's what they say online anyways. So, yeah, I had some work done on this. Also, another upgrade was this one had stainless steel frets, which pretty much never wear out, and that's awesome. But like I said, I had to have some fret crowning done, some fret work, leveled it out a little bit. My tech did that, and this thing plays like a dream. It's really hard to decide, you know, which one would you choose? You've got the newer one with the crazy, that's just an awesome finish, right? The older one's a little tamer, you know? You got different necks. Which neck do you like better, right? Five piece, 11 piece. Uh, this one's dry and smooth. This one has that light kind of satiny finish to it. It's a little glossier than I like. So, you know, when your hands get sweaty, it gets a little bit sticky, but not too bad. Um, locking tuners, standard tuners, you know, which way do you go? Oh, and finally, uh, dual humbucker, humbucker, single coil humbucker. Now the one minor complaint that I have with that is for me when I pick, I guess I tend to pick a little deep between the strings and I kind of get caught up on that center single coil pickup. So I'd rather not even have it there. Um, they both have the five way selector switch, but you know, if I had my choice, I'm always going to go a dual humbucker every day of the week. That's just, that's me. You know, I don't use a single coil too much. Uh, once in a while with the clean sounds, you can get that, you know, second and fourth position, get that kind of little bit of that strat quack sound. That's pretty cool. But, you know, usually I'm going to go humbuckers. 
So yeah, which would you choose? Throw a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Which one? If you could only choose one, which one would it be? Fortunately, I don't have to because I own both of these, but it's pretty cool. And I got them both for a steal. I mean, this one I think goes for about a grand and this one's probably 1300, give or take, you know, brand new. But yeah, I got them both for a really good deal. And uh, no complaints here. I love these things. This is, this is my style guitar. This is what I like. You know, the modern metal look and feel and sound. I'm not really a vintage guy, but nothing against it. It's just, I didn't, you know, when I started playing guitar, my, my, my idea of, of hard rock and heavy metal was this, you know, the modern stuff. That's just what I, you know, kind of gravitated towards, so. So let me know your thoughts. Um, tale of two RGs, I guess, right? Um, six years apart, possibly manufactured in the same Indonesian factory. Some minor differences, but nothing major. So check out the sound samples too throughout the video and um, let me know what you think. Stay safe, stay healthy. See ya!